And now the last ones that I'm gonna do is your camera. Um, so your camera has um, lots of different options. Um, one of them is here. So in this one, um, I have my camera desk right now, so it is not really doing anything much. Um, but if I lift it up, and I point it outside. So I'm pointing it outside right now, and you can see it's not a sunny day, but I can adjust by tapping on that box. I can adjust um, my focus areas, how brightness, um, I can swipe up and down. So it's really dark now, or really overexposed if I go to the top. So there are those options in there that you can edit in your lighting. That is one that is probably the one that most of my students wouldn't know about um, and are most impressed when they find it because they might say, oh, I, the lighting's not good enough for a photo in here and you can adjust them. The other options that you have in here are, let me just open them up. We have videos, um, square videos, square photos, um, panorama, and um, yeah, have them play around with those. I do have a couple of those options. Both slow mo and time lapse, you're better off using something to balance on or a tripod um, for when you're doing it with students, just for them to get the best quality ones. When you have photos taken, so to edit it, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna show you a screenshot. Um, this is something to be aware of yourself if you're um, in a classroom environment. Um, some of these options do not show up on the top of the screen. So in this one, um, I wanna edit this. So uh, you will tap on the edit button. So the edit button doesn't actually display on a projector. So um, that's why I've taken a screenshot. I always just get into the habit of taking that. So I'm going to edit that, so, um, edit. And then I have options. So over here on the left, you have, um, let me just click on this, options for timers. Um, for live photos, I'm going to show you um, that with the original of this one in a moment. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, show that after. For filters, you have various different filters like black and white. I always get students to take their photos in black and white first, and then or in color first, and then change it to black and white. Um, I have my crop options, so these are on the left hand side. Um, on the right hand side or on the top when I'm cropping I have options for dimensions that I might get them to use depending on what app they're using the photo with afterwards. Um, up here those three dots on the ellipsis there are for markup so I'm going to just quickly I'm not going to mark up this I'm just going to show you an additional markup feature. I could get my pen and I could draw on this I'm just gonna put an emoji in there. I'm gonna put a butterfly in there to give this butterfly a couple of friends. I'm gonna click on the text. I can type away there, it'll bring up my keyboard and I want an emoji. So I'm gonna go into animals and where's my butterfly? I have one there. So tap on my screen, uh, tap on my butterfly. I wanna edit that and I want it to be bigger. So I tap on the little A's. So you'll get used to the A's being in reference to text size. I want it to be a bigger butterfly and then I'm gonna move it over there. So that's an additional thing I can do on markup that I haven't previously shown. When I'm done, I can click finish there. These on the left are all your different um, color options. So before I do that, I'm actually just gonna crop this because this was a screenshot and um, in here, click done. And if we click edit this, um, exposure. So I normally get, give them quite a lot of time, maybe like a class to just point, um, play with these. 
and go through them and see what a difference it makes. And when you click finish done, click done, it will save over the original. Um, but it will end up in your photo album. An additional thing you can do there in albums is if I am looking at say these two, you can create a little album with them. So this is good practice if you're gonna have a year like in transition year. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, different projects. So I have like my RTC demo ones from the other night. I have flowers for science. Um, they were the same photos. And I'm just going to say this is like a TY field trip. Um, so I'm going to click on there and that will be another one. And if I go down here, um, TY field trip will have my couple of images in there. I want to just get back here to my original butterfly up here. So there's other options. If this was a live photo, which I believe this was, you have one more option. I've just clicked on edit and it's this. So if a picture is good, but maybe it's, it would have been better a couple of seconds earlier or later, you can adjust the main frame to make the a different photo in there, the key photo. So if I choose this, actually I have a really nice flower. I don't have my butterfly, but that may have been what I was trying to guess and my butterfly got in the way. So I can change that and make that my key photo instead. So I always leave live photo on because you can um, sometimes save a photo um, or there might have been a, a better version and I try to get students to look at what those um, other frames look like. So I'm going to click on cancel and the last option in photos there is if I swipe up, you have additional options. So those options look like this and um, there are different animations. So bounce is like a boomerang that um, students might be used to for their phones. You've long exposure and loop them um, just try them out so there are additional options that are in there you can also map and see where that photo was taken